So with that, let's go directly to uh, Sin. Sin, you are up for our first question for Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Oh, hi, Dr. Uh, T. Colin Campbell. I really enjoyed your, uh, your lecture. It was so informative. I met you uh, two years ago in New York at your conference. I took a picture with you. Uh, I just would like to know what blood tests and what vitamin supplements you need, the dose and the frequency when you're following a whole food plant-based diet. I don't use supplements. Uh, <clears throat> that's not the, that's, uh, that's a, uh, the pharmacological version of nutrition. Um, I was very active in, uh, in the early days when that industry first started in the 1980s. Uh, in fact, uh, I was on the National Academy Committee and the, that industry was making pretty wild claims about what they thought it could do. Uh, and it was taken to the uh, Federal Trade Commission court, the official government court in that case. And the National Academy of Science asked me to be their representative challenging those claims. So I had a front row seat sitting in the docket uh, as those claims were being made for that early industry. Uh, and they didn't particularly like my discounting their claims. <laughs> but in any case, it really got me in tune with that whole movement. And so for the next 15 years, I'd say, or longer, uh, a number of studies have been done on whether or not those supplements work. Uh, and uh, sadly, they don't work really. Uh, in a number of cases, we're finding that these nutrient supplements uh, actually, actually have the opposite effect from what they're intended. Uh, so I'm not a fan of the nutrient supplement industry. I know there are times when somebody has been diagnosed with a particular nutrient deficiency and might look like they're helping them a bit, so fair enough. But uh, in terms of a strategy to remain healthy, forget it. Uh, I, I'm really... Uh, I'm just simply not a fan of that industry and what they do. They know it well. We've had a, I've had a contest with, their, <laughs> with them for some years, but I've really been close to it. I've watched closely. And um, if I'm wrong, I'll be happy to be wrong, but somebody's got to come back and show me, uh, you know, a, a collection of data that they really do work. And I'll be convinced, I'll admit, but I don't, I don't think so. I'm getting a lot of others who actually agree with me on that. Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Up next, we have, excuse me, we have Michelle. Michelle, what's your question for Dr. T. Colin Campbell? Dr. Campbell, I'm a huge fan of your work and I've taken your program at Cornell. Um, you're the single most inspirational person in, in, uh, in my nutrition journey. Um, I would just love a little bit of clarification um, about other forms of animal protein. Uh, your research is really clear on casein. Um, could you just please explain how this translates to egg proteins or whey or other forms of animal protein? Yeah, I, I'm going to draw on some data of a friend of mine, a uh, professor at the University of Western Ontario, who publishes data back in the 80s on this point. Uh, namely, he compared a bunch of proteins, about, I don't know, what is it, 25 or so, uh, half protein, half animal, half plant. He compared their ability to uh, uh, increase uh, or decrease uh, blood cholesterol. And it turned out that all the animal proteins acted like each other. There were some differences. They all tended to increase cholesterol. And incidentally, that was first discovered way back in the early 1900s. But in any case, all the animal proteins increased it. All the plant proteins decreased it. Uh, there was no overlap. Animal proteins act like each other. Plant proteins act like each other. Of course, there may be some differences you'll see here and there in different experiments, but whatever differences might occur for one particular outcome could be different for another outcome. So I make the generalization, and I think it's fair, that animal proteins are going to have this property unless, unless proven otherwise. Um, I haven't seen any evidence that uh, they can ever do anything like plant proteins. So I'm, good, I'm just labeling all animal proteins uh, basically the same. But keep in mind too, Having said that, that's the research perspective. Having said that, uh, certain animal foods that contain the animal proteins, obviously, some of them are kind of a little more marginal maybe than some others, like yogurt and, and some cheeses and stuff, especially yogurt, because uh, that's a fermented food. Those are fermented foods, and they tend to have some things in there that are sort of like what plants have. And so uh, I don't want to uh, go too far beyond the what I just said first, animal proteins are problematic. And I'm going to suggest, even though we didn't test all the animal proteins for their ability to cause cancer, I'm convinced that they, they, 
they will do about, about the same thing. Uh, and plant proteins, I, I, I can't pick out one over another because uh, plant proteins are rather like each other. Plant, animal proteins are rather like each other too. Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Up next, we have James. James, looking forward to your question. Yeah, doctor, thank you so much. I read the China study two and a half years ago and I went whole food plant-based and thank God for you. I want to ask, what is the best diet I can do to keep in remission mental cell lymphoma? Yeah, you said, the last thing you said, mental health? M mental cell lymphoma or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Any particular suggestions you can give? I'm sorry, I don't get that word. Uh, lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's. Lymphoma, oh, I, I say lymphoma. Uh, yeah, well, again, I can't cite you specific cases. I think there are, the, the problem is this whole food plant-based diet, by the way, uh, researchers and science has never really supported the testing of a, something like this. They always tend to want to test one thing at a time, you see. Uh, and uh, that's a problem for me. They might test a single nutrient, as I just said, that that's uh, doesn't work very well. Uh, but the evidence that I see for all the cancers, lymphoma included, the evidence that I see so far is all going in the same direction. And I expect it will continue to go in the same direction. The whole food plant-based diet has a breadth of effect that, uh, um, that it, uh, let me say this, I don't want to go over, overboard and make any, any uh, claims when I don't have the evidence, you know, I don't, I'm certainly not making a prescriptive evidence, prescriptive statement here, but the science, the science, based on the science entirely, the whole food plant-based diet, well, if anything, if there's any effects at all, it's going to be good. 